Hey, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini. I'm back with another video tutorial, and in this one, I'm going to teach you a great beginner project. It's how to crochet the flattering cow. This is the finished project, and I think you're going to love it. Before we jump into the project, let's talk a little bit about the yarn that we're using. We are going to be using Lion Brand's Homespun Thick and Quick, and if you've ever taken a look at this yarn before, it is pretty textured. So this was kind of a challenge for me, but I'm so glad that I took it on because I actually would recommend this type of a yarn for a beginner, and let me tell you why. The yarn kind of is like, it looks kind of like zigzaggy a little bit, almost like rickrack. And then it has like uh, threads that are holding it together going down the middle and kind of like scrunching it. So it gives it this little zigzaggy look. And so the same way that it makes it a little bit more difficult for you to see your stitches because of the texture of the yarn, at the same time, it will also help hide some of your mistakes if you are a beginner. So one thing that as beginners we tend to struggle with is to make consistent stitches, right? Well, this yarn, if you're using like a smoother yarn, you'll be able to see more of the variance between your stitches. So if you did a stitch too tight and then the next one is too loose, you'll be able to see that pretty drastically from one next to the other. So when you stand back and look at your project, it's kind of obvious, right? So then you kind of get discouraged and don't want to make stuff anymore. Well, if that's the case with you, give this yarn a try because it's so textured and it kind of zigzaggy like that that if you do have that variance between your stitches or uh, the tension in your stitches as you're crocheting, this is also going to help cover that up and so it doesn't make it as noticeable. So definitely give this a try, okay? Another reason I recommend this project for beginners is because the entire thing is done in double crochet. So as a beginner, you want to start off with projects that allow you to repeat the exact same stitch over and over and over again until you get the tension down and you basically can stitch that second nature, right? Well, look at this cow, how big it is. You're going to be making a ton of double crochet stitches and it's really simple, but it's so repetitive that you're going to be building your skills at the same time and at the end of it, you're going to end up with this luxurious and toasty cow. So definitely think about that and give this project a try. For this tutorial, we'll be using a free pattern called the Flattering Cowl, and it is free off of the Lion Brand Yarns website. I've included the link below in the description box for you. Remember that you have to create a free account with Lion Brand Yarns first before you can access all the patterns that they have in their huge online library. Aside from that, we'll be using two skeins of the Homespun Thick and Quick, and if you just want to keep it to one skein, this is about how thick it will be, just to give you an idea. So you can make a gorgeous cow half the size of this one with just one skein. So the pattern calls for two, so that's what I'm going to show you in the tutorial and you can see how much bigger it's going to be. This used up exactly two full skeins of the Homespun Thick and Quick. Aside from that, grab your basic crochet supplies. We have our tapestry needle here, a pair of scissors, and we'll be using a size N crochet hook. Let's get started. So I'm going to pull some off. And you're only going to be working with one skein at a time. The second one is so that we can get that massive width of the cowl. So once we're done with this, we're going to continue with the second one to really make it nice and thick. But we'll stop and show you what it looks like after we use up one skein, which is still a really pretty and a good sized cowl. So if you feel like stopping at that point, feel free to stop. All right, so let's get started. Basic crochet, the first thing we do is a slip knot. And I have a tutorial walking you step by step on how to do this. So you can find my beginner series if you don't know how to do it. Okay, so once you have your slip knot, we're going to go ahead and start reading the pattern here. So the first step says chain 60. Super easy. All you're going to do is your chain stitches. And I have a complete beginner series on crochet beginner basics. And chaining is basically going under the chain or under the, the working yarn, which is the yarn that's still attached to the skein, and just going through one two, three, four, five, and you get what I mean. So go to 60. And 60. Okay, so at this point, the pattern says 60. So I've come to the end here. This is my last chain stitch. Okay, so I know that it's oriented correctly, and I'm going to go through here to join it together to make a round. So each chain stitch is kind of made up of a V, and then on the back side, there should be one little hump. So I'll show you. I'm going to put it in through here and through the next one. Okay, 
So it's kind of, it's going through one strand of yarn and two strands of yarn, okay? It's a little difficult to see because this yarn is really textured, but I like that I'm breaking it down here for you to see. So one and two, and the other component to the little chain stitches is this little back hump. So I prefer to do it like this. I go through the top two and then grab my working yarn to do the slip stitch. And the slip stitch is you put your hook through whatever stitch you're doing and you grab yarn once and you pull it through all the loops that you have. Okay, so now we've created our circle. That's our tail over there. We've created the round here, and now let's move on to round one. So the pattern tells us to chain three, which is going to act as our first double crochet. So chain one, chain two, chain three. And this is our pretend double crochet right here. So the next step says to double crochet in each chain around. And then we're gonna join it at the end with a slip stitch and we're going to continue to do that all the way around. So here we go. The first part, we did three to start. Now I'm coming here to my chain and I need to do a double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over, find my next stitch. Here it is. Get my tail out of the way. Yarn over, come through once. Yarn over, come through two yarn over, come through the last two, and that is a double crochet. So see what I mean? The first three chain stitches that we did is the same height as a real double crochet that we did. So when we start, we start with the pretend double crochet, which is just three chain stitches. And now we're going to continue to do the double crochet all the way around. So grab another one, find your next stitch, put it through there, yarn over, come through one, yarn over, come through two, yarn over, come through the last two. So there's our third double crochet. Now this is probably going to be the trickiest part of working with this type of textured yarn is finding these chain stitches. But the simplest way for you to do it is by feeling for it. So remember I said they're made up of a V stitch, one strand, two strand, and on the back side should be one going down the middle. And that's how you know. If you felt the strand all the way down before you joined it to make sure that you were looking at the top side of the chains, this part should not be a problem. So let's do another double crochet. Yarn over, come over, and I kind of kind of move them like this in between your fingers, and that will open up the space in between it so you can start to see exactly where the stitch is. Okay? So here's my next chain stitch. And if you can't grab the two strands of it, it really just matters that you be consistent. So if you want to do it in the back loop of the chain, which is this one that kind of sticks out a little bit more, feel free to go ahead and do it in there. It's still going to turn out great. And really the yarn is so textured that you're not really going to be able to tell. But if you want to take your time and go through the actual stitch, the two strands like this, you can do that also. Yarn over, go through once, yarn over, go through the two, and yarn over and go through the last two. And then we're going to continue to do that all the way around. So I'll meet you back here when I'm at the end. Okay, so I've done all my double crochet for round one and then the next thing we need to do is to join these two. So the first thing you want to double check is that everything is laying nice and flat so there's no twists in your cowl. This is the first round. This is going to establish the shape of the finished cowl and then we're going to basically grow it up to make it nice, big and bulky. So lay it like this. Make sure there are no twists in it before you go to join it. And then when you go to join it, you'll know, okay, that this needs to be joined right here and I'll have a nice circle. So to do that, we are going to do a slip stitch in the beginning here. So I'll do it this way for now. Through one side, through the second side of my stitch. And the slip stitch is you basically put the hook through whatever stitch you need to do it, it, do it at, and then grab some yarn and pull it through all your loops. So there we go, we've joined these together. Nice and even, everything is joined. Round two says to slip stitch in the first space between stitches, between the beginning chain of the previous round and the next double crochet. So that's going to be right here, okay? These were our first three chain stitches, remember? Because this is where we slip stitch to the first three uh, chain stitches. And they want me to do another slip stitch, but right in here in the space between this one and this one. So I'm going to go through and slip stitch. So there we are. The next step says to chain three, one, two, three. You're always going to start off your rounds like that with the chain three because that's your pretend double crochet and you need one to start, okay? 
And then after we do these chain three, we're gonna double crochet in each space between the stitches around. Now this is super easy. After we're done with this initial round, which is a little bit tough to kind of find your stitches, the rest of this is super easy because you're gonna stitch in between the previous round of double crochet. So you don't have to feel around for any stitches here. You just basically have to find this opening and you can see that it's pretty obvious in between every single stitch. So from now on, it's easy peasy. Grab yarn, go through the space in between the stitches of the previous round and do your double crochet. Grab yarn, find the next hole in between the two stitches, go through and do your double crochet stitch. Okay? So here it goes again. We yarn over, find the next gap in between a, uh, the previous two stitches here, go in through there, and do my double crochet. Again, yarn over, find the hole. It's a big space between your double crochets because those double crochets are pretty tall, and you can see there's a nice big gap in between each one, so it's so easy to find. And you're gonna continue that all the way till we get to the end, and then I'll show you again how to join the round with the slip stitch. It's the exact same thing over and over again. Okay, so I'm coming around to the end. I'm gonna do one more here. And then let me show you how I know that's my last stitch. So my last stitch is here in this gap. And I'm not gonna do another one here because if you look up, this one here is coming out of this. And this is our first three, uh, the chain stitches that we started off with. So see how if I stand it up, that one is coming out of this stitch. Okay, let me see if I can show you that better. So I just did one here, and I'm not going to come in and do one here because if I look up, this one is coming out of the space here. So that's going to be my last one. Join these two together. So to do that, you're going to do it just like we did before. Grab that top chain stitch there and then we're just gonna slip stitch these together, like that. So that one's coming out of there, and now we're moving on to the next one. So that was round two. And now the pattern tells us that we're gonna repeat round two until the piece measures about 17 inches from the beginning. So from here all the way up, we wanna build it up to about 17 inches, and that's gonna take you about two skeins. And just to refresh your memory on what we did in round two was that we slip stitch in the first space, between our stitches, so right here we just slip stitch to combine the two, the two ends of the round. Now we're gonna slip stitch in here again in the next little space here. And now we're gonna start again with our pretend double crochet, right? Those three chain stitches. So there they are. And then we start with our double crochet in the same way we did the previous round, in the space between the two stitches of the previous round. So I grab yarn over, go through the, the spacing between those two double crochets from the previous round, and you're just gonna continue to do the exact same thing for as many rounds as you want, depending on how thick you want your flattering cowl to be. So I'll meet you back here after I'm done with one full skein, and you can see how big it is and what it looks like. All right, so here I am after I've done all these different rows, and I'm at the end of my skein. And as you can see, this little bit of yarn is not gonna be enough for me to reach from here to here to finish off this round, okay? You can see how this is where I need to come back. You see how it drops down low? That means that to finish this round, I need to come all the way to here. To give you an idea of about how wide this uh, the cowl is with just one skein, mine measures about nine inches wide, which is still a good decent sized cowl. But if you are gonna follow the project or you wanna end up with the bulkier one, like I have here, it's pretty much gonna be double that. The pattern tells you that we're gonna stop when we get to 17 inches wide, and it's almost 20 inches. Why? Mine is, because I just went till I finished the end of the second skein. You can stop it, you can go two thirds of the way or three quarters of the way, whatever you want to do, it's your cowl, and that's the beauty of making your own stuff, right? Now I'm going to show you how to add in the second skein so we can continue and kind of make it be seamless. So I have my outside tail, and I have this one here. So this is what I like to do. I'm going to go and try to do another double crochet, but I'm going to show you where I'm going to stop. So I'm not going to complete it. I'm going to yarn over, go through my stitch, yarn over, pull through up, yarn over, pull through two. And when I have two loops left on my hook, I'm going to stop, right? Normally to finish the double crochet, I would grab yarn and pull through all of these. And so I'm going to do that, but with my new 
yarn. So now let's pick up our yarn tail from the new skein, okay? I have it here. Leave a little bit of a tail, and now I'm putting the tail end closest to me, and the part of the tail of the yarn that's attached to the skein still, the working yarn, right, away from me. Because this is just how I hold my yarn, like this, okay? And I'm going to come in here. I still have two loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over with the new yarn, right, and use that to pull through the two loops. So now I've used the new yarn to finish off the last one. And that's how you're going to get that seamless join. This tail here... You can just throw it to the inside because we'll weave that in when we're done with the cowl. So now you just have one working yarn or one tail of like a working yarn. This is the part that's attached to the skein and you're just going to continue just like if you how you did before, right? So here I am doing my double crochet stitches and I'm just going to continue. So there's no need for any knot or anything like that. You already joined it in when we finished off the double crochet stitch with the new yarn. So you can see we have a nice seamless join here and the tails both of the new yarn and of the last skein that you finished are towards the inside. So you'll just go back and weave those in at the end. So now we're going to continue with our double crochet stitches joining every round at the end with a slip stitch just like we have done for the first half of the cowl. Continue to do that. The pattern says until your cowl here measures about 17 inches wide or if you want it to be super bulky like mine just go ahead and continue doing it until you finish off the entire skein of yarn. So back to the one that we're working on, we're making it the whole width of using up the two skeins and you can see how big mine is here. It's about 20 inches it's going to finish at and I just like to do it till I'm done with the skein. Uh, this is how much yarn I have left over and it's not quite enough for me to do a whole nother round and so I'm going to stop it right here. And so let me show you now when you get to the end of a round what you're going to do. So let me show you how you would finish it off. You obviously want to stop crocheting after one full round so you don't end up with an uneven bottom edge, okay? And so here I am coming up to the next, uh, to the first one of this round that I just did. So I need to join these two together. Remember, we always are joining our ends with a slip stitch. And so we go here to the top of the third chain. Remember, this was our pretend double crochet. So we have one, two, three chains and I just put it up through one side and through the other so I'm going through the full stitch so you should have two little strands of the stitch and then on the back side there's one that's on the underside of the hook okay so go through there yarn over and pull through both and now I've joined this end alright so that's joined together and then all we gotta do here is cut off a long kind of tail and we're fastening off so what that means is you take the, the loop that you still have, that if you were crocheting, right, this is what would be in or on your hook. You're going to take the long tail and just pull it through that and pull nice and tight. And there I've fastened off the edge. So that's it. Then the cowl is done. All we need to do is go back and hide these ends. And to do that, you just weave them in. You can leave this super long or you can make it shorter. I like to leave it long. I weave in and when I feel like it's secure enough, then I'll chop off whatever is remaining. So let me show you that. Grab your tapestry needle, and I like to use one with a nice big eye opening here, especially when we're working with these bulky yarns. I bend or fold the yarn in half and kind of make it as flat as I can with my fingers and push that fold right through the eye of the needle. And then I pull one end out so it threads it like this. Just go up and down and up and down through any random stitches that you want. We're just trying to hide these ends and keep it from unraveling. So there's no set place of where you need to do this at. Just do it somewhere so that it gets caught up in there. And when you think you've hidden it through enough spots, whatever you have left, you can just chop it right where it's at. Okay? And there it is. Our tail is completely hidden and you can't see where it is. So we'll do that to all the ends. And remember that if you did it with two skeins, you're going to have a join in the middle here somewhere too. So that's it for this video tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed learning how to crochet the flattering cowl and that you give the project a try. If you enjoyed this video tutorial, make sure to hit it with the thumbs up below, share it across the different social media sites, and if you give the project a try, go ahead and upload pictures to my Facebook page or on Instagram. You can find me at Crafty Gemini or just use hashtag Crafty Gemini so I can find your works as well.
Thanks again for watching and remember that there's also a giveaway going on where you can enter for your chance to win two skeins of the Lion Brand Homespun Thick and Quick. The link for that giveaway is in the description box below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.